In this uh, video, I want to discuss 10 aspects of society, or 10 beliefs that society holds that keeps people in bondage, men in bondage, to being quote unquote the nice guy. Okay, nice guys in church, nice guys in the world. These are the 10 beliefs that can keep one of these men in bondage to being the nice guy, the guy we all despise, the guy we all hate. Uh, because he's too nice and he's not really very nice. He pretends to be nice, okay, maybe to get what he wants or what not. Society has a responsibility in creating these types of men. I would say that I used to be one of these men when between the age of about 16 to 24, 25. I was one of these typical nice guys, okay? I can vouch for that. And I can tell you a lot of these beliefs that I'm going to discuss with you now were some of the reasons why I was that nice guy. I'm still responsible. We're all responsible for what we are and what we do. But there are certain things that make us, certain encouragements that make us want to go down that sort of path. So without further ado, let's crack into the video. And whilst I'm at it, can you like, subscribe and hit the bell icon? I'd really appreciate that. I'm trying to grow a following on YouTube. I know my videos aren't necessarily all baz kabaz at the moment, but I can't afford that sort of equipment. So it's just me at the moment with my thoughts and my ramblings. Anyway, let's continue. First, men are inherently evil. So this is the belief men have oppressed women for years and years. They are evil. Men are evil. Now, as a Christian, men are evil. But the, when people say men are evil, they mean in relation to women, men are evil, women are not. OK, that's what they mean. So in other words, men are the evil gender. They're the ones that uh, cause all the problems and nothing is ever women's fault. It's all men's fault because they are the ones that cause all the problems. Now, growing up with this sort of mindset makes a man not want to be masculine. He doesn't have the confidence to be masculine because he's always berating himself over how evil his gender is. And he's always living under that cloud of his own manhood, his own gender being evil and being rejectable. So he will often berate himself over how much men have oppressed women in the past um, and think that he has to somehow carry that sort of burden of what men have done towards women in the past. When in reality, he can't be responsible for what those other men have done. Those other men did that when they lived there. And to be honest with you, during that time, men also provided for women and provided things that women needed. That Yeah, there was some oppression, there was. But there was. it wasn't all... All bad. I mean, oppression was all bad, but it wasn't all bad what men did. They did some good things as well. Okay, so moving on. Men are all sexual predators. So if you've got a man, he needs to be taught not to rape. He's a sexual predator, okay? All men, if given the opportunity, will be a predator, a sexual predator after women and whatnot. It's a load of rubbish. But society tends to believe this. And men li listening to society, listening to the brainwashing that society gives them, end up believing that they are indeed a sexual predator. So in that situation, then, they feel sort of inadequate, they feel shamed about their manhood, about their own sexuality, and they become the, the quote-unquote nice guy. Okay, that sort of leads them into that sort of behaviour, or it can make them very aggressive. Either way. Number three, men are the weaker sex. We get bombarded with this in movies, soaps, TV programs, all this sort of stuff about women being the dominant sex, uh, men being past their sell by date, as it were, and being much of the weaker sex. You know, we see movies, uh, modern movies now changed and turned around to have female leads and the men are made up to be wimps and schmucks in these movies. And of course, if, if young boys, young men go and see these films, it doesn't do anything for their masculinity. So they wind up to be these nice guys, you see, that people end up detesting and hating. You see, these feminists who make these movies and SJWs and such, they say we want the men to be like this. But when men are like that, women don't like them like that. So w women have to decide what sort of men they want men to be. Either they want men to be these sappy, wimpy uh, type of nice guys, or they want men to be men. The decision has to be made, OK? Number four, masculinity is toxic. OK, and the belief that anything to do with being masculine, 
you know, this uh, the Y chromosome is defective, okay, and uh, masculinity is just bad, and this causes men to hide their true masculine selves um, that women actually want to see and want and like that sort of lion in them. They t they tame it until he's a pussy cat. So we get these nice guys who are pussy cats. They've tamed their inner man so that they're, they're just a little kitten and they don't have anything, any bearing on society, the women aren't attracted to it, people in general aren't attracted to it because they've got no oomph, they've got no assertivity or anything, okay? Number five, men are ruled by their sexual desires. So it's the belief that if a man doesn't have a woman, he will just automatically masturbate. Um, that isn't the case. Men, the, the true markings of a man is to be in control of his sexual desires. So this idea that, oh, if a man's on his own, he must be, he must masturbate. Um, you know, he must uh, be somebody who, who just tonks his pillow as such like. It isn't true. You know, men can have the power over their sexual desires and such like in, if they don't have a girlfriend or, or whatever else. This also is used to shame men into having to have a relationship. Because people say, well, if you haven't got a relationship, how do you deal with the sexual part of your life? You know, you must be masturbating all the time. Um, and then you get ridiculed because people think that you're masturbating all the time because you're single, when in truth you're not. You've managed to be able to manage your um, sexual desires. So this all sort of ties in as, as a shaming way of trying to get men to believe that they must have a relationship at all costs and no matter what. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a relationship. Relationships are good, being single is good, whatever you choose to do, okay? Number six, women are worth more than men. Women are the better sex, they're worth more. Because women can have children, okay, and men can't, they have an in, uh, inherent worth and value that men don't have. Now this is true, but that doesn't mean that women are worth more than men. Men have to prove their worth and their, their value by what they do and what they say. This, this makes men unique, because they are the ones that have to be the doers. You know, a woman can sit there being pretty and be valued, a man can't. A man has to do things and be things in order to be valued. That's part of what a man is, it's part of what he does. So it's a load of rubbish that women are worth more than men. It's just that men have to earn their worth. They haven't got inherent worth like a woman has. Okay. Seven, men must have a relationship with a woman or they are inferior. So if a man is single or is MGTOW or he's perhaps broken up from his girlfriend, he doesn't want a relationship in a while, the people around him, the folks and the, the friends, they shame him and say, oh, well, you haven't got a, a lady, what are you doing with your life? You need to get a, with a woman, you need to be married, you need to, you know, you need to be responsible and have children and be married. Rubbish, okay? If you want to be married, or you're, as a Christian, God, you feel God wants you to be married, get married, okay? Nothing wrong with it. But don't let people shame you into running into a relationship and you don't feel ready or you don't feel that's the right season for you to be in a relationship or whatever. Don't let people shame you into saying, well, you must be in a relationship or you're inferior. There's nothing inferior about you just because you're not in a relationship. There may be inferior aspects about you uh, regardless of being in a relationship or not, but you're not inferior because you're not in a relationship, okay? Number eight, men's emotions are worthless. So this is a belief that whatever man has, he could be crying his guts out all his emotions are just worthless. They're, they're not worth anything, okay? You get sometimes in a relationship, perhaps a, a man is crying, and the woman's saying, oh, pull yourself together, be a real man. You, you know, it's, it's treading on his emotions. His, his emotions aren't worth anything. Now, I do agree that men shouldn't be crying over every little thing. If, there's, if they're slightly in debt or there's, there's something slightly gone wrong that they shouldn't be bawling their eyes out. You know, men, that's men being sappy anyway, isn't it? Uh, if things have generally gone wrong, he's been diagnosed with cancer, or uh, his 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 um, brother's passed away, or um, it has been major debt and things have crumpled on top of him, then let him cry. His emotions aren't worthless. Okay, they're not worth any less than yours. Okay. Number nine, you must must prove your manhood to be accepted. So this idea that men must prove themselves all the time. Now, the problem with this is, is you're better proving yourself by not proving yourself. In other words, you'll prove yourself more as a man by simply knuckling down and doing, following your passions, following your job, doing what you need to do in your life, regardless of what other people think and not for other people. 
Okay, this idea that nice guys are made when they start to try and prove themselves to women and society. Right, this is thing we must prove ourselves. We must prove that we're worthy. Um, instead of understanding your worth in the first instance, you must prove that you're worthy all the time. Okay, um, and this is it's just it turns a person into a nice guy. And number ten, men always lie. Now there's the songs out there. All oh, your lips are moving, so there are, or you must be lying. That's a Megan Trainer song. So therefore, society is taught that more men lie. And if a man's lips are moving, he's lying. You know, a, you know, man can lie, but women can lie. It's just they're better at it. Women are better liars than men. They some, they often don't get caught. Men are not very good liars. Okay. So they get caught. So, of course, because they're caught more often, people think they lie more. It's not necessarily the truth. Men don't lie any more than women. And that's the truth. OK, now then ends my video of 10 things society believes about men that turns them or keeps them becoming a nice girl. Thank you.